Hey, hey there, it's Rubber Band again. And what I'm going to be doing today is impressioning a key to this Corbin wafer lock. It's quite an old padlock. So, what I have here is my impressioning grip, maybe a prolock, a blank. This particular keyway is 1000V, uh, 5 wafer. I have polished the top of the blade after nicking off the plating. So I nicked it off with my number four file here. I'm keeping this zoomed up so you can see my rocking motion. This is more of a tutorial. I'll do another video on how to prep your blanks eventually. So here we go. So this is polished. I used 1500 grit sandpaper after I nicked off the plating. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into the lock, completely relaxed, and I'm just gonna turn it back and forth. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get the wafers to mark the blank with spacing. You can see there's a deep kind of gash right up towards the shoulder. And you can kind of see them at this angle, about four. And there'll be one on the tip that you can't really see. I'm gonna be chasing those marks. I'm gonna be doing that off screen so I don't have to move too much. So. I'm using no optics for this because it's a wafer lock and I'm pretty adept at getting keys working for these. So <clears throat> look, I found one mark and I'm gonna be chasing it like this. I'm using my nail as a guide. You'll see that's a pretty common way to guide the file is your nail. <clears throat> and anybody who impressions a lot, you'll often see a gouge in their nail. And there usually is in mine anyway, so there's at least one example. Okay. So now, now that I kind of have most of my spacing figured out and I kind of know what I'm hunting for, I'm gonna grab my grip and I'm gonna lift up. It's going to bind the top stack up closer towards the body of the lock, or the base of the lock, excuse me. So up, turn, rock down, rock up, relax, lift up again, turn over, same motion. I'm going to let it relax again, and I'm going to push down, binding the wafers closer to the top of the lock body. Turn, up, down, same motion, up down. So now I'm looking for more marks. Oh, I see some good chips along the side, like right here. Oh, excuse me. Right in there. So I'm going to be chasing those off screen. And once I get a really good gouge, I'll get it up on camera. So I'm going to hold my file, I'm about halfway down, and then I do about four passes to change the depth. One, two, three, four, you know. So four passes of about that length to change the depth on these. Sometimes a little less. I don't really have a working key for this, so this is an actual making of a key. So eep. that'll be what it looks like when you get pretty proficient at the motion. I've done it thousands of times, so I kind of jimmy through it pretty quick. All right. I had pretty good marks up on four. So I had a good mark on three as well. So. Okay. Now, I'm moving the blank off camera to uh, see if I can't find, okay. All right, here on depth number four, excuse me, I'm gonna try to get it to focus here. Right about 
There, okay. You'll see that kind of gash right there at the base of my nail. That's an impressioning mark for wafer. It's difficult to get this kind of stuff on camera because the blank tends to be so reflective. But hopefully we'll be able to get some sort of body of work going so we'll know what to go after in the future. My mentor always say, when you're making a key, you gotta make a good first impression. And that's a bad joke. But it's right, because how you start these things is technically going to dictate whether or not you get a good key. Because if you overfile or if you overbind, you'll often get no marks at all. Which is the enemy of most impressioners is no marks syndrome. So, yeah, there's a lot of slop in there, probably because this lock is real old. I'm inadvertently knocking it out of focus. It's a very handsome lock. I'm a big fan of it. Okay. <clears throat> I've got a really good mark right. Let's see if I can. All right, right there. Right there. That kind of dent, that's a mark. I'm going to chase that four strokes of the file. All right. All right, I'm getting marks on four, one, and three. I'm gonna knock those down. Do one clean up mark on five, which is where we just were. And now I'm going back to one. I'm doing this to try to get a hard mark on the sides. Wafer locks can be kind of finicky once they get older and finding a way to make them mark can be difficult. Okay, so I have a really strong mark on five again. It's that same smash mark from earlier. Right there, underneath the file. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to move it so okay yeah kind of right off the side there closer to the camera that's a smash mark going after it all right okay i'm getting the sensation that something towards the tip is stopping us from turning so I'm really looking for that. I've got a deep, hard smash on number three. And we're starting with a wafer lock in this series because they are the easiest to impression. All right. It looks like it doesn't want to show yet, but on three, there's a pretty deep crease underneath there. So I'm chasing that. Think of this as less of a how-to and more of a the impressioning version of the I'm gonna pick open a lock while I kind of tell you what I'm doing. All right, hard smash on one, two, and three, and five. So here we go. So, 
how much slop there is right here, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the first cuts are going to be really deep because they're not pushing very hard on the blank. Oop. Thought I canyoned a bit. All right, real hard smash marks basically everywhere. So that means the binding is going good, which is nice. And that also means that my spacing is good. Oop, stay on my shorts. Oop, I'm close. Dad. Yeah, Jeremiah. Can I go to the house? Yeah. All right, you get to hear my kiddo asking for right permission to go somewhere. So, oop, falling smashes. I got deep ones. We're real close on this one. Everybody, folks, y'all. All right, and oh, we're real close. I could probably force it over right now, but I'm not gonna, because I don't want to break the blank. Ooh, I got a crater almost. All right, right here on five. Right there, yeah, you can see it. It's taking up like half of the, uh, the cut. That is a good impressioning mark. I'm gonna chase that one first. And there's also one on number one of the same variety. Just the blemish is a lot better. I'm going to guess that this is going to turn now. Oh, man. We did it, folks. We've got an open. That's a functional key. But when you get an open, the first thing that you see, see this really hard resistance? That's because there's a spot that's still too shallow. And it's on cut number one, and oh man, you'll be able to see this. All right, look at this. See that big kind of trough right there? That sub shiny mark right about there? That's a mark. That's a whole shiny mark all to itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nick that down. One, two, three, Four passes with the file. Close it up again. All right, we're in real. Oh, it's super buttery. We've got a great open and a great key. So what I would do from here is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna use calipers, and I'm going to figure out the depths. I'm gonna get as close as possible. I'm gonna take a, another blank 1000V keyway, and I'm going to code cut it on the 1200 PCH punch that I've got, and we'll get a code cut key for this awesome, beautiful padlock. Let's get it out of this prison, huh? All right, all right. Look at that. Handsome schmansome. Impressioning is kind of like my art, if I were go so far as to give it that label. It's the one piece of locksmithing that I'm relatively talented at and I do fairly well with. So got got the key. Look at this. And just real gentle, real gentle. Oh, it's binding again. We'll have to clean it up. Maybe the code cut will handle it. We don't know yet, but anyway, thanks for tuning in.